The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling Part 1 Mowgli's Brothers It was seven o'clock of a very warm evening in the Sioni Hills. Father Wolf woke up from his day's sleep. Mother Wolf lay with her big grey nose among her four little cups. The moon was shining. Agur, said Father Wolf, it is time to hunt again. He was going downhill when a little figure with a bushy tail said, Good luck go with you, O chief of the wolves. Good luck and strong white teeth go with your children, that way they may never forget the hungry in this world. It was the jackal, Tabakwi, the dish licker. The wolves of India don't like Tabakwi because he runs about making trouble and telling tales and eating from the village rubbish heaps. They are afraid of him too because Tabakwi often goes mad. Then he forgets that he was ever afraid of anyone and runs through the forest biting everything in his way. Even the tiger hides when little Tabakwi goes mad, because madness is the worst thing that can happen to a wild creature. We call it hydrophobia, but they call it Devani, the madness, and run. Enter, then, and look, said Father Wolf, but there is no food here. For a wolf, no, said Tabakwi, but for so little a person as myself, a dry bone is good food. Who are we, the Jidderlok, the jackal people, to choose? He went in and found the bone of a buck with some meat on it there. All thanks for this good meal, he said, licking his lips. How beautiful are your children! How large are their eyes! And so young, too! Indeed, indeed! I must remember that the children of kings are men from the beginning. Tebekwi knew as well as anyone else that there is nothing so unlucky as to compliment children to their faces. But it pleased him to see mother and father wolf feel uncomfortable. Tebekwi sat still and then he said, Shere Khan, the big one, has changed, changed his place of hunting. He will hunt among these hills during the next month, so he told me. Sher Khan was the tiger who lived near the Wainganga Wain River, 20 miles away. He has no right, Father Wolf began angrily. By the law of the jungle, he has no right to change his place of hunting. He will frighten everyone within ten miles, and I, I have to kill for two these days. His mother did not call him Langri, the lame one, for nothing, said Mother Wolf. He has been lame in one foot from his birth. That is why he kills only domestic animals in the village. Now the villagers of the Vainganga are angry with him. He came here to make our villagers angry. They will look for him here when he is far away, and we and our children must run when the grass is set to fire. Indeed, we are very thankful to Sher Khan. Shall I tell him of your thanks? asked Tabekwi. Out! cried Father Wolf. Out and hunt with your master. I go, said Tabekwi. You can hear Sher Khan. Father Wolf listened and heard the dry, angry sing-song of a tiger who caught nothing and does not care if all the jungle knows it. The fool, said Father Wolf, to begin a night's work with that noise. Does he think that our bugs are like his fat Vainganga ones? Hush! It is neither a bullock nor a, a buck that he hunts tonight, said Mother Wolf. It is man. 
the cry changed to a purr that came from everywhere. Man, said Father Wolf, showing all his white teeth. Four. Are there not enough beetles and fo frogs that he must eat man? The law of the jungle doesn't let any animal eat man. The man killing means the arrival of white men on elephants with guns and hundreds of brown men with gongs and rockets. Then everybody in the jungle suffers. The reason is that man is the weakest of all living things. They said too, and it is true, that man-eaters lose their teeth. The purr grew louder and ended in R of the tiger. Then there was a cry, an untigerish cry from Shere Khan. He has missed, said Mother Wolf. What is it? Father Wolf ran out a little and hurt Shere Khan. This fool has nothing better than to jump at a woodcutter's campfire. He has burnt his feet, said Father Wolf. Tabakwe is with him. Something is coming uphill, said Mother Wolf. Get ready. The grass moved a little. Then the most wonderful thing in the world happened. The wolf stopped in mid-spring. He stopped before he saw what he was jumping at. Then he tried to stop himself. The result was that he jumped up straight into the air for four or five feet and landed almost where he left ground. Man, he said, a man's cup. Look. Just in front of him stood an undressed brown baby. It could just walk. He looked up into Father Wolf's face and laughed. Is that a man's cup? said Mother Wolf. I have never seen one. Bring it here. A wolf can, if necessary, take a neck without breaking it. So Father Wolf's teeth closed right on the child's back. Not a tooth even scratched the skin. He put it down among the cups. How little, how naked and how hairless, said Mother Wolf. The baby pushed his way between the cups. Aha, uh -huh, he is taking his meal with the others. And so this is a man's cup. Now, was there ever a wolf that could tell about a man's cup among her children? I have heard now and again of such a thing, but never in our pack or in my time, said Father Wolf. He is without hair, and I could kill him with one foot. But see, he looks up and is not afraid. The moonlight stopped coming into the cave. Sher Khan's large head and shoulders were there. Tebekwi, behind him, was saying, My lord, my lord, it went it here. Shere Khan does us great honor, said Father Wolf, but his eyes were very angry. What does Shere Khan want? My quarry. A man's cup went this way, said Shere Khan. Its parents have run off. Give it to me. Sher Khan jumped at a woodcutter's campfire and was angry because his feet were burnt. But Father Wolf knew that the mouth of the cave was too small for a tiger to come in by. The wolves are a free people, said Father Wolf. They take orders from the head of the pack and not from any cattle killer. The man's cup is ours to kill if we want. You want and you do not want. What talk is this of wanting? By the ball that I killed. Am I to stand looking into your dog's cave for my quarry? It is I, Sher Khan, who speak. The tiger's roar filled the cave. 
Mother Wolf put the cups down and came forward. Her eyes, like two green moons in the darkness, were facing the eyes of Shere Khan. And it is I, Raksha, the demon, who answer. The man's cup is mine, Langri, mine to me. He shall not be killed. He shall live to run with the pack and to hunt with the pack. And in the end, look you, hunter of little na naked cups, frog eater, fish killer, he shall hunt you. Now get away, or, bu or buy the, la the buck that I killed, I eat no cattle. Back you go to your mother, burnt beast of the jungle, lamer than ever you came into the world. Go! Father Wolf looked in surprise. He has almost forgotten the days when he won Mother Wolf in a fight from five other wolves. She then ran in the pack and was called the demon. Shere Khan could face Father Wolf, but he could not stand up against Mother Wolf. He knew that where he was she had all the advantage. She was going to fight to the death. So he backed out of the cave mouth and shouted. Each dog barks in his own yard. We will see what the pack will say to this. The cup is mine, and to my teeth he will come in the end, or bush-tailed thieves. Mother Wolf threw herself down, and Father Wolf said to her, Shere Khan speaks this much truth. We must show the cup to the pack. Will you still keep him, mother? Keep him, she said. He came naked by night, alone and very hungry. Yet he was not afraid. Look, he pushed one of my babies to one side already. And that lame cat wants to kill him and run off to the Wainganga while the villagers here hunt through all our lands. Keep him? Sure, I will keep him. Lie still, little frog. Oh, you Mowgli, for Mowgli, the frog, I will call you. The time will come when you will hunt Shere Khan as he has hunted you. But what will our pack say? said Father Wolf. The law of the jungle says that any wolf may, when he marries, go away from the pack, but as soon as his cubs are old enough to stand on their feet, he must bring them to the pack council. It is usually once a month at full moon, so that the other wolves may see them. After that inspection, the cubs can run where they like. Until they have killed their first buck, no one of the pack can kill one of them. If someone kills them, he will be killed by the pack. Father Wolf waited till his cubs could run a little, and then on the night of the pack meeting took them and Mowgli and Mother Wolf to the council rock. It was a hilltop covered with stones. A hundred wolves could hide there. A Kayla the great grey lone wolf who led all the pack by strength and talent lay on his rock. Below him sat forty or more wolves of every size and color, from old vet veterans who could kill a buck alone to young black three-year-olds who thought they could. The lone wolf led them for a year now. There was very little talking at the rock. The cubs were in the center, where their mothers and fathers sat. Now and again, an older wolf went up to a cub, looked at him carefully, and returned to his place. Sometimes a mother pushed her cub far out into the moonlight to be sure that everyone saw him. A Kayla from his rock cried, you know the law, you know the law. Look well, O oh wolves. 
and the nervous mothers took up the call. Look, look well, O oh wolves. At last, Father Wolf pushed Mowgli, the frog, as they called him, into the center. He sat there laughing and playing with some stones. Akela never raised his head from his paws, but went on with the monotonous cry, Look well. A roar came up from behind the rocks. Shere Khan cried, The cup is mine, give him to me. What have the free people to do with a man's cup? Akela never ev even moved his ears. All he said was, Look well, O oh wolves, look well. There was a, a chorus of voices, and a young wolf in his fourth year asked Shere Khan's question to Akela. What have the free people to do with a man's cup? Now the law of the jungle says that if there is any dispute as to the right of a cup to live in the pack, at least two members of the pack who are not his father and mother must speak for him. Who speaks for this cup? said Akela. Among the free people, who speaks? There was no answer, and Mother Wolf got ready for her last fight if things came to fighting.